And number 14, we talk about a growth of a certain organism. Um, it can be modeled by this function where C of T, this rep, this whole formula represents the total number of cells and T is ours. Now, you know, they're giving you a real life formula that they actually use to find it, but they're not really asking you to do much with it. Um, to solve this, I'm going to remember this rule of exponents. When you have x to the m to the n power, you're just going to multiply these. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this as 1.029 to the 24th, okay? And then I'm going to kind of leave that t outside. With that being said, I can now evaluate that. So if you put 1.029 to the 24th power in your calculator, you're going to get 1.986 when you round. And if you notice, this is the same formula as number 3. Number 15, a public opinion poll was given um, between to explore the relationship between age and support for the candidate in an election. Uh, what percent of the 21 to 40 age group was for the candidate? So of the 21 to 40, I'm looking at 30, and then I'm looking that there was a total of 50 people in this age group. You are going to need to do this last column, and this, this type of question appears on almost every test. Okay, so I'm going to say 30 for the 4, the, the, the 4 group, uh, divided by the total of 50. So to, div to find the uh, percent, I'm going to divide, I am going to get 0.6, I'm going to multiply by 100, and I'm going to get 60%, which is choice number 4. Which equation um, in order pair represent the correct vertex form of this equation? What I suggest you do is put it in y equals in your calculator and use the minimum command. All of these points are different, so you don't even have to pay attention to this. You can just find which one of these matches your vertex. That would be your best strategy. But if they're looking for this vertex form, I'm going to kind of use this completing the square strategy. Um, remember, when you're completing the square, you're taking half of 12 and you're squaring it, um, and you're going to get 36. But when you're putting it on the same side of the equal sign, you have to do a minus because you have to balance it out. 36 minus 36 is 0. You don't, you don't want to change the value without doing anything to the other side. So now what I can do is I can factor this trinomial as x minus 6 times x minus 6. I'm going to simplify this, and I'm going to say minus 29. x minus 6 squared minus 29. So it looks like this formula matches either 3 and 4. Now you can use your knowledge of transformations and you can say that, hey, this went to the right 6 units and it went down 29. So if that's the case, that means that this parabola is like all the way down here. So this is like 6 and then this is like 29. Number 17, a student invests 500 for three years in a savings account. Remember, when you're doing this formula, you're doing 500, right? You're saying 1 plus the rate as a decimal converted to decimal to savings account, so it's going to be plus, um, and then they want it at the end of three years. So now, this is the formula, but what they're doing is they're testing your knowledge, like, hey, do you know that these are all equivalent? There's one of these that is not equivalent to this. Okay, so when I add 1 plus 0 0.04, I get 1.04. It's not this one. If we just jump right into it, it's actually choice two. I have a plus. This has a minus. This is just not going to work. Your answer is choice two. Number 18 is kind of a confusing question. Um, you know, what they're really asking you is which of these following four points lies on this line? So what I do to that is I subtract the 2x to the other side, and I divide both sides by 4. Negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half, and then 33.6 divided by 4 is 8.4. They're basically saying that, like, hey, this line shares a graph with this line, okay, and then where do they intersect? Well, 
to kind of go right off right off the top here, um, if I take this equation and test this point, I have um, 5.4 equals negative 1 half, uh, 6.0 plus 8.4. So 5.4, negative 3, plus 8.4 is certainly um, a value that works. If you think about it in terms of the graph, um, the equation was negative 1 half x plus 8.4. So I graph that line by starting my y-intercept of 8.4, going down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Okay, now this sketch... This sketch is a sketch of these points in this graph. Now, the point 65.4 is not on this table, but when you look at it from this perspective, it looks like it intersects at 65.4. Um, I suggest using graph paper for a better look.